Hey yo yo. Yo, check it. This my special attack. A hundred swords, a hundred episodes, and here's to a hundred more. Who got next? Place your change on the cabinet. Air combo, university graduates juggle my enemies before tagging in the masters hero. Pros in action, toe tagging champions getting active. The message will always get near you. Return to the dream team, Spider Man and Strider hear you. When the mask is on, I can't promise I clap to keep his glasses on. The handshake was potent. The inner glow shown as a mega optic blast trailing behind the Shinku Adoken. How you gonna dodge both of them? Blast you down to the last atom. Best regards from the pro time can. You couldn't fathom If you were raised on gaming and put a controller up I'm old enough to study the meta before I bless you We understood space in the dash clean Now we need to adjust and warm poster right next to the pro athletes Final justice like a primary lotus from out the sky Stars and stripes reminding you racism is still alive Bring a plasma sword to a gunfight Hey Ato, bring a hurricane kick Tatsumaki Sentaku One time for all my otakus who played the console till their eyes closing Probably forgot to study for their finals Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My wordplay my swerve play when blades clash oh. Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my swerve play when blades clash oh. Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my swerve play when blades clash He's like a so, like a solid five two, like one one thirty. One twenty two. Low lane <clears throat> height and weight. You gotta stop running out with football players, man. Uh <laughs> five five, hundred and thirty four pounds. Oh, he's taller than it's like Earl Boinkins. Remember Earl Boinkins? Yes. He sure. was a bucket. Yeah. I was this size, 5'5", 134 pounds, when I was like in sixth grade. Were you ru- maybe maybe fifth grade? <laughs> Were you running out with uh, giant football players? <coughs> no, to but further. If you could imagine put a, a magnifying glass on your just imagine height. a sixth grader walking out with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it looks like to walk out when when Lil Wayne does it. Oh boy, that was that was horrible. Um, Boom. Yo, we're back. It's been a minute. We are grown and be having stuff going on. Yep. Uh, so, what anyway. A, you, you know what, bro? That was a very simple explanation, but, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's all. That's all, folks. Like, that's, that's that kinda, was that's that's the answer. Just it. Yeah. Like, just, niggas are adults with lives. And, and sometimes it's hard to wake right. up. Uh, but yeah, man, we're back. Episode 166. A lot going on, man. We're going to talk about, um, we kind of alluded in last about our top five favorite sci-fi movies. That's a genre that uh, I've definitely climbed into a lot over the past few months. I've been watching a lot of sci-fi movies. Um, we're going to talk about a new movie that just came out, mm-hmm. The Creator. Um Fire. That we saw. It was fire. Yoga Uh, fire. Also going to do a big giant Ahsoka episode review because we have missed episodes five, six, and seven on the show. And, um, you know, that's it. So let's get into episode 166. What are you into, my friend? Last time you were playing (laughs) Starfield. Yeah, I finally... All right, so... And you had crud on your spaceship. Bruh, so much dirt, nigga. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I had so much crap on my spaceship, <laughs> dog. Niggas was trying to take me to jail, but I had I had sca- I had a uh, uh, scan jammer, so they couldn't penetrate my hull, and I had secret compartments. Stash but, stash box. Bad stash box. But I will say, I actually got out of the got out of the crab business, um, and I got into you went the, straight. Not exactly. <laughs> I got just out found, the streets. I became like a merc. I became like a body, a bounty hunter. What I started to do. So, I, so this is going to, I'm going to say a thing. And for the folks that have played Starfield, they'll know that this is not going to sound as crazy as I'm going to make it sound. But I beat the game 11 times. That sounds ridiculous. But what's the, 
What's the way that it doesn't? <laughs> How does that not sound crazy? <laughs> It's hard to explain without spoilers. And I, I'm not going to give heavy spoilers. But these are some minor, 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 minor Starfield spoilers. Um, so skip ahead if you don't want to hear it. Um, <clears throat> when you beat the game, there is, <clears throat> they work into the game story, New Game Plus. Like they work it into the story in a really creative way. And when you come back to play New Game Plus, your character has knowledge of the last playthrough. Mm. So you can literally skip the main story. You can skip the main story and go straight to like the last level and like complete the last level. And it counts as a, as a playthrough. That's, that's interesting. It is interesting. And they, they tie it together in a way that's actually really dope, really, really creative, clever story. But the more times you beat it, you get like, you get like a cool space suit and like a spaceship and all of this shit. So I, I beat it and you can't, once you get to, to 10th, your 10th playthrough, like you don't get any more level level ups than that. <clears throat> so I came back 10th time was bored with like robbing niggas for their crud. So I decided to rob niggas for their whole spaceship. <laughs> so I started to, I went to where I knew like there were like a system where they spawn a bunch of pirate ships and I just started jacking them niggas, bro. I just would like destroy this, destroy like the the fleet and leave the strongest ship, break their shields down, break down their engines and board their ship, <laughs> kill everybody on board and then st- steal their ship and sell it. And oh I just started selling. Gosh. I just started selling, selling spaceships, spaceships? bro. That, and it's not illegal. Like, it's not illegal to do that. That's, so, that's not. What about killing people? Uh, the niggas was <laughs> pirates. So... So nobody cares. Nobody gave a fuck. That's <laughs> I imagine the profit for an entire spaceship is is they find a way. It's a Bethesda they game. Oh, uh, they find so a way to they find a way because you have to pay like the ships are worth like a hundred racks, uh, but you gotta pay a tax. You gotta pay basically like the taxes on that bitch before you can sell them, and the taxes are like in this universe the taxes are like eighty percent of the car, of the ship's value. So like you you pay that to register it. And then it's basically like when you get a car, you have to pay for the taxes on it first, and then you can sell it. It's the same thing. You got to pay the taxes or pay the registration fee, which is like eighty thousand dollars <laughs> for a hundred thousand dollar whip. <laughs> you got to pay eighty thousand dollars in taxes, and then I can sell it and make twenty grand. Oh, jeez. But they, they're so like if you do it, if you go to a dealership and do it, like like an actual ship deal. I mean, they have this. This game is crazy. They got ship dealerships. <laughs> like you can go to the manufacturer got a store you can go there and sell shit to the manufacturer anyways if you do it straight from the dealership it'll charge you the registration fee is a lot more but if you do it like just from the menu it's only like 60 percent. so um i got to a point where i was like i had like seven ships in my in my inventory that i was ready to pawn ready to hawk on the fucking black market and uh I ended up making like 200 racks in like an hour, which is a lot. That's good. That's like a lot for that game. Anyways, that game is fun, but I've not been playing that recently. Um, I went on a fast last week was with good results, lost a bunch of weight, feel much better, but I needed something to stay focused. So I've been playing cyberpunk again, again, I'm playing cyberpunk again. Um, damn, I forgot the bit. What was the, what did I, Shit, I forgot the the quote. I don't remember, but you like the first time you did delivered it. It was it was a classic. Damn it! Why can't I remember it? Um, uh, damn! Something about paying a mortgage. I got two mortgages. You want to know why? Because I'm gambling again. I'm playing Cyberpunk again. Uh, no, but the new DLC came out. It's fire. They got Idris Elba um, in the in there. He's cool. Yeah, uh, sure, for sure. That should be. It would be amazing. Um, I've been playing that, and uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing lately. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> that's fire. Um, I have been. I just been doing a lot of jujitsu, man, and I have <laughs> have a funny jujitsu story. Uh-oh. Um. So, I am a blue 
belt with uh, a few stripes and jujitsu and I I can train with I can train with someone I can roll with somebody go against somebody that doesn't have a belt on say it's no gear or something I can pretty much after rolling with them I can pretty much guess what belt they are you know what I mean yep um <laughs> so this is a few weeks ago um you know my sensei had brought this black belt in right and this is a guy that he kind of came up training with and this the guy's been a black belt longer than you know sensei wayne has and i start i do some rounds with him and you know it's and, and you know so there's kind of there is like etiquette i guess you know in, in jiu-jitsu right where i always start off smooth no matter what and then if the person is like turned up then i'll just you know what i mean i'll just dial it up a little bit depending on their <coughs> skill level you know what i mean um i can you know i can go against a, a spazzy person that's near me or below my my belt level and i can i can still handle them going really light you know what i mean now <laughs> When you go against, when you're when you are rolling with a higher belt, like let's say brown or black, you know, in that area, there's there is this thing where you you almost you want to you want to be smooth always, but you also don't want to make it seem like you want to piss them off. Yeah, like you also don't want to make it seem like oh, I'm about to, a black belt. Oh yeah, let's Try go. Hard. I'm about to yeah, you know, what I'm, exactly. You already know what I mean. Of course, bro. right? So. There is, there is that right. Like you don't want to make oh, like I you have the audacity that Bruh, you're about to you, beat a black belt. Straight when you up. said that, it just brought back a memory of me pissing off Kyle Felix <laughs> one time. Y'all yeah, remember Kyle Felix when I was younger? He wasn't a black belt yet, but he was like a brown with two yeah. stripes, and that nigga punched me in the face <laughs> a few times, and I tried to stop him, but I couldn't because that nigga was better than me. And he was like three years older than me as well. And so I learned don't piss off people who are higher rank and older and bigger and stronger than you because yes. they will beat your ass. <laughs> so so I've had I've even even just me, like I even I've had to cool off some, you know what I'm saying, some uh some what did you say a, tr a try hard? try hard bro <laughs> i've had to, to cool off it happens in uh, basketball too yeah. bro when somebody learned oh you used to play somewhere like hey, yeah get the fuck on before you get me injured bro like chill <laughs> i've had to cool off a few people like that already but it, any so so my, since they brings in this black girl I, I started around with him man just it's so funny because right off so you can tell um, you can really tell people's skill level literally in the first like five seconds because of how deliberate their grips are right at the beginning. You yeah. know what oh, I'm saying, shit, bro? And I didn't, I have not trained jujitsu as long as you, but I know exactly. Right, you know, because you can feel the grip. A, like, there's a deliberateness and like they're very decisive. And yeah, they know exactly. It's like, oh, this nigga got me. Yeah, like, so, that nigga got me, bro. So, I'm gonna go for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> so we, so me, I know exactly so what you we, mean, bro. So you know, we start rolling around starts, and you know, we get our right, right when we engage, right in the beginning, and I just go, is he, is he about to like go, go, a yeah. black belt? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, whoa, I was hey. like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo, this was the these are the toughest. Like, and there's times where I'll I'll train and it'll just be me and Sensei, and he'll just like he'll just smash me, he'll just beat the crap out of me. He does it all the time, right? To and, and I've had those, but like to go against a black belt. You 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 don't know them, so you don't know their game. Like I know my sensei's game a little bit. Like you don't know their style, you don't know their game, and for them to just be, just be, like, to just go, bruh, I am I am good at jujitsu. <laughs> I this it felt like I was drowning. <laughs> <laughs> little little um kimura sweep that i like to do and, and then i went for that and it just 
And that was the only thing I got the whole time. And he just like buried me. And I just felt like I couldn't do anything. And then, right. like afterwards, after I did, I did like two or three rounds with him. I just look at that Wayne. And I, I, know, I already know what he was looking like. I already know. He was like, he was like yeah, right. Because he, he knew like, he set you up. He, he knew what was going to happen. And he goes, and he goes, I just wanted you to feel right. That. No, just like, Right. I was like, oh, thanks. Right, come come here for a second and roll with the with the real niggas right quick one time. They gonna put you in a pretzel right quick, and they just wanted Yo, you to. I and and this was like one of my best experiences I've had. So I just keep thinking about it because it was one, it was hilarious, but two, it was very humbling experience. So Bruh. that was very funny. I've been outside of martial arts for a while now, like in an organized way, but mm-hmm. I but like. I can think of several stories exactly like yeah. that. So like, I mean, I, I used to train with Kyle a lot, and I don't know if Kyle... Like I, th- I think I might have fought Kyle, like... I fought him a bunch, and I only beat him, like, once or twice. The, I think I beat him legit, like, clean mm-hmm. once. Like, the one time I beat him, and I knew... Because I was, I was older, and I knew he was, like... I think, he's, I think he started off trying to fight me like he normally does, and was like, okay, this nigga has, has leveled up. And I think it was too late. Like I just, I had, <laughs> I had too much of an advantage, and he couldn't overcome it. The, only, the time I beat him before, I think he was like really, really taking it easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I'm trying to think. Oh, so I to, I've told stories about my homie Ra before too. Like Ra and Kyle. Ra didn't. I, he actually didn't actually. He didn't really train with us. He was just another martial arts nigga that like my sensei knew, mm-hmm. who just like pulled up for a while and just started showing up. But he never like was in our system he just was just hanging out <laughs> but just was a martial like, arts ass nigga like casey jones <laughs> yeah bro i told i have to tell you the first when i knew i knew raw was nasty when i saw him he did a hurricanrana in the match before like a legit hurricanrana i was like bro what the fuck is this nigga ray mysterio so i i i had to go and of course like raw at the t- i was like 12 raw's like 35 or something he's a grown-ass man um and I did, and I only trained jujitsu for through like yellow belt because I needed it for my black belt, mm-hmm. maybe to purple, I think. But so it was like two years. It wasn't anything crazy, not not as hard as you're as you're going. But I remember mm-hmm. I had to roll with him once, and when you mentioned the grips, that was what I thought about. Yeah. Like just I could the, just feel like the oh. deliberateness and the decisiveness, and it's just like I'm twelve, thirteen. I'm not like a little kid anymore, but and I'm getting some teenage strength, but I'm certainly far from a man. And this is not, not only is this a grown ass man, this is a grown ass man who knows what he's doing. And I was just like, bro, there's like iron on the other side of this. <laughs> like I could, like when he grabbed me, I was like, I'm, I can't fucking go nowhere. <laughs> like, I, there's nothing I can do, bro. Like, cause I, cause you know, when you, when the, you, you, a lot of the, the jujitsu that we did was from, it was like you know beginner stuff. You go, you like it's from standing up, right? Mm-hmm. It's not we weren't really on the ground like that. So I think it's important to start standing up. A lot of when you go to the schools, a lot of a lot of people start um, on the ground, and I just think that's a lot of. I think that's a lot of jujitsu, the sport bleeding yeah. into yes, the martial exactly. art. Because when I was in Kyoto, when I was training in Japan, um, they were starting all the rounds standing Stand up. up, and it's you know right. it's also. Has uh, you know in Japan you get a lot of those guys already have judo background too. Right, so yeah, yeah. so there I, <laughs> I was when I was training in Japan. Um, you know you get some guys that are like lower belts in jujitsu, but they're like black belts and in judo. judo. Very first round I did in Japan, I was I was doing really well and, and hitting a lot of submissions out there. But this guy bounced me yeah. from judo judo takedown. Oh yeah, as, immediately. Soon as we, <laughs> I was like over the hip oh, immediately, bro. Judo guy. All of a sudden, the world just flipped upside down. I I already know. I already know. So, like, I remember being in like the the starting position grips with with like like um I forget what the what the position is called, but when you got them by like the the gear the gi collar. Yeah, the lapel <laughs> lapel grip and the wrist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were in that position, and I was like, dog, this is there's this is a statue, bro. Like, <laughs> even if I even if he wasn't moving, like I don't I can't do anything with this. In this circ- in this situation, like I can't do anything, bro. It's just just very helpless. So I know exactly what you mean. Dog. Oh my god, it was hilarious. And then uh, the end of the story, which is also hilarious. Um, after I did a few rounds with him, I I now I'm starting to 
see that since they set me up you know what i mean and the guy look just looks at him and looks at uh wayne and he just goes he moves well he moves yeah, well. yeah and yeah. i was like uh, what I'm you like, mean i was like what i just got yeah yeah <laughs> so okay so let's before we move off of this i couldn't do anything let's let's switch because this story translates both of you you and i we share martial arts experience but we also share basketball experience this type of experience translates to basketball mm-hmm. as well because I had a situation like that when I was at my absolute peak, like a year oh, or two man, like out of college. Humbled by like an older, better, but like a pro, like a pro. Yeah, yeah. but this like wait, so like I yeah. was at some pro am. I forget, might have been Saint Cecilia, might have been um, the one, the one they be having out at Lifetime or at uh, uh, Southfield. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the one in Southfield at Southfield High School. <clears throat> And I was, man, this was my, like, a year out of high school, a year out of college, so, like, maximum athleticism, maximum skill, but, like, none of the mental hang-ups from mm-hmm. being under a coach. So, like. Yeah, that was when I was at my best, too, like, right out of college. Couldn't tell me shit, bro. Yeah. Like, shoot, pulling up from anywhere. Can't anybody, <laughs> can't anybody check me, bro? Like, and I've never been, like, a super handles guy, but, right. like, I'm a college. You just got the. You I'm know, a college you guard. You like, I played how. guard in college. Yeah. So, like, you're not finna take the ball from me. <laughs> and I'm finna go past you whenever I want. Right? Like, just. I've decided that I want to go to the basket now. So, I'm gonna make a crossover dribble and I'm gonna come back to the same side and you're gonna still be over there. I'm gonna take two dribbles. Uh, sorry, one dribble and be at the basket. Because, you know, in, in college. You got to do more with less. So you take one power dribble I'm at the basket, right? right? So couldn't tell me shit. Absolutely. I could have. I mean, this was the time when I was going back and forth with like Springs from N1, right? Mm, I remember him, yeah. Really feeling super confident. Greg Grays. Remember Greg Grays? Mm -hmm. Bro, best shooter that I think I've ever seen in person. Um, I had to check him one time and... It was a moment where it actually didn't even I didn't really feel bad, right? So like obviously he bust my ass, right? So let's let's skip to the to the punchline. He bust my ass. But it was like when I felt, you know, they put the pro body on you, right? Yeah, that's the difference. And it's just like, dog, I can't like it was no resistance, so strong, bro. Yeah. Like none. And I'm like, bro, I can't fucking move him at all. <laughs> and like I'm trying my best to guard this nigga, and he just he just took and he didn't even do nothing crazy bro just like one or two dribbles pound dribble like not, not only did he not miss he never touched the rail just bloody fucking cash everything was wet bro oh my gosh and like when he decided to post up like he was he's like six four i think mm-hmm. just so and it gets just just finish this point like when i when the game was over like i i was like okay that nigga's a professional and there's levels to this shit. Like I'm really good for a person who played at the level that I played, mm-hmm. but I I never had a chance. You right. know what I'm saying? Like so, I used to me and some of my homies used to play in this. It was this really good pro am out in Lake Orion at this place called Great Lakes Athletic Club, and um, it used to be some some pros used to come through there. Like Charlie Bell used to come play. Like Jason Richardson played up there. Some of those guys that played at Michigan State, the older guys. Um, but we used to play in this league, and this was – I was maybe like – it was probably like two years out of being out of college, maybe three. And our team was so good, and we used to always play this one stacked team in like the Final Four, the little tournament thing. And I was guarding Kalen Lucas, and oh, he was guarding me. I got a story and, about him too. Bro, so <laughs> – In high school. Ugh. So – First, I was on fire. I scored the first like eight points in the game, and he was guarding me. Mm. But when he had decided to score himself, yeah, it was the, when he decided enough, enough, got, was, enough I, was enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. All right, bro. All right, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I stop. defended him for two possessions. And I said, Mike, right, come on. <laughs> switch. Come on, bro. I can't, like, I can't, I like, can't stop him from like, doing what he, he wants to do. Go into the room, and you're, and I'm just. I just, I'm just like literally just being phased. <laughs> way I, just, yeah. I just does whatever. Um, it was funny. Kalen, I, I'm two years older than Kalen because you, you are probably a year older than him, right? Kalen Lucas yeah. or maybe the same. I might be a year older. Because yeah, I, I, think I, so, cause I he think, went to St. Mary's. Yes. He yeah, graduated in 2007. 2007. So, yeah. yeah. Right. So, I remember I, we played against him in high school and <laughs> just as like a sophomore, that nigga was like a dog. <laughs> It's just one of those things where, like, okay, clearly this nigga is a different. He's a yeah, different player. He's a dog, man. And I, I remember, like, I, I didn't guard him a ton, 
But I just remember like and we didn't we only lost by like eight or nine. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty good game, but I just kind of remember like, oh, okay, like he's gonna like we just have to game plan for stopping everybody else. Cause like we can't <laughs> he's gonna do whatever he wants. I actually played with him a little bit in college too when he was at Michigan State because mm-hmm. um I had a guy on my team named Sean Matia that was like his best friends with him, so he would come up to our open gyms and stuff and play. But he yeah. was that dude was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. Oh, so man, sports, that's in sports, martial arts, right. um, competitive, competitive, being humble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be, it's 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 so here, fellas. Listen, men, it's okay. We just told stories about being excellent in our crafts, but also running into brick walls. <laughs> <laughs> and being okay with it, and it's fine. It's fine. It, it happens. No big know? deal. Like there's a nigga out there that will put that will fold you into a pretzel. <laughs> no big deal. And rest assured, there are a couple of niggas that you will fold into a pretzel. It's all good, man. Give and take. You ain't got to be the the alpha of everyone. Circle of life. Because there's gonna be some unexpected. Because I've been that unexpected, <clears throat> unsuspecting nerd. That you didn't think could hoop, but didn't mm-hmm. drop thirty on you. Like yep. I've been that guy. I've been, yep. <laughs> right. And Greg Grace was that guy for me, and several other people that I played against that were like, oh, "Okay, this nigga was destined to be better than me, and there was <laughs> nothing I could do. The universe just didn't. It wasn't illustrated for me to be able to compete with this nigga. And it's okay. It's totally fine. <laughs> it wasn't illustrated. Right. Like it just wasn't in the cards, bro. It was they did not, not in the cards for me. Yeah. Hilarious. Uh, but yeah, man. So. Another thing I kind of been into, um, well, real quick, just a quick wrestling recap. Uh, wrestle Dream is this weekend. I'm excited for it. Um, they're do- I'm sorry. I just, they're doing this MJF Adam Cole thing. Yeah. I don't know if I can survive them going from <laughs> the, the title, go- going from MJF to Adam Cole. I can't, I cannot oh survive. Oh my God. I can't it, Are we that. thinking that's what's going to happen? I oh do. God, and I, oh I would not be able to survive that. I've I'm not really I've been a little tuned out of wrestling for yeah. a while just because I, I just it hasn't really kept my interest either. I couldn't I wouldn't be able to survive that. But Wrestle Dream is going to give us Brian Danielson versus Zack Saber Jr. I am extremely nice. excited for that. Eddie Kingston versus Shibata, um, and the six man match, which I'm excited for: Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, and um, uh, ooh, who is it? Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, and Kota Ibushi versus Will Ospreay, Takeshina, and Sammy Guevara. So nice. that would be fun. Um, but <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this. One random thing that I've been obsessed with <laughs> recently. Okay. I've been super into animals and watching a lot of like <laughs> Nat Geo stuff. <laughs> I did not expect you to say that. Bro. I know, right? And so um, my brother um, went out of town. So I had been um, watching his dog, and I just kind of been at his house, just chilling with his dog. And I don't know, man. The TV was just on like some Nat Geo stuff. And I just like, <laughs> holy shit! I was like, animals. Oh my god, I love animals. Hey, look and, at that! There's and, animals and on cats, TV. and I just been watching. <laughs> just been watching all these all these different uh, animal shows and stuff. There's a show on uh, Netflix called Predators. I think it's it's pretty dope. Um, but I just wanted to know, like, what is what's your favorite animal? I saw this in the chat and I oh. wanted, I wanted to respond, but I I couldn't really think of one because I've it's changed a lot, right? Like right. I think to, when you're a kid, you're like, oh man, I like right. like a cheetah, like, yeah, or cool. Or <laughs> so I do like cheetahs a lot. I like bro. There's so that show I was talking about on Netflix, Predators. Like there is an episode about cheetahs, and it is so good. It's yeah. like these two brother cheetahs, and they are. Um, it's their uh their little like territory that they hunt in gets <coughs> gets uh burnt down by a wildfire, so they have to like migrate somewhere right, else. So and good. it's it's good, it's good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. So I like cheetahs a lot, but when, the thing that that sucks when you grow older is you realize like some of your favorite animals are they have like major flaws, right? Like cheetahs are super fast, but they are also like they're like glass cannons. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they're very, very for a big cat. They're mm-hmm. very frail. They're the they're the maybe I think the smallest of the big cats. Yeah. Well, I, they're the smallest of the biggest of the biggest class of big cats because there's there's like lynxes and shit too mm-hmm. that are still considered big cats, but they're not. They're like sm- they're like medium cats. But of like the <clears throat> jaguars, lions, tigers, they're definitely the smallest, mm-hmm. and they're also like the frailest. And like it's the hardest for them to get food. So like. They get punked a lot sometimes by like lions and shit, mm-hmm. which is 
it's almost like you grow up to find out that your brother is like not quite as cool as you thought. Like, <laughs> like uh, you ever remember that episode of Recess when Vince, oh yeah, when yeah, Vince's yeah. brother ended up, <laughs> ended out to be, up being a nerd, kind of a, kind of a dork a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheetahs are still badass, but they're not like invincible like I thought they used to be. Um, they're still still one of my. They're favorites. still they're up there. They're certainly in my top five. Wolves <clears throat> are in my top five because of how smart they are as a team. Um. And then, like, I just, I had a, I, bro, I will not shut up about this still. Like, I've had, I had a moment where I saw, I've seen in my lifetime, in person, two or three different, maybe the same, but two or three instances where I saw a bald eagle. They're just so fucking big, huge. man. And, like, when you look at the their, dragon, dog. Yeah, when you, and then their feet and their talons. Like, I, have you ever seen people on the internet that, like, are, they, they always say that, um, like dinosaurs were like like closer to what chickens yeah because they were, yeah. because if closer you, to birds if than they you, were left. if you look at um Lizards. like these eagle <laughs> and their talons and stuff they look like reptile like feet. it's crazy yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's really it's really weird again bro the most <clears throat> the most i think um there's some nerd that's probably gonna hey, be like oh. well actually uh as far as i know the most recent like approximation or, or guesstimate as to what a tyrannosaurus looked like that nigga looked like a chicken bro he was like <laughs> a big ass chicken with feathers that's terrifying it's, it makes it more scary <laughs> my, it's, honestly like that's, that's horrible <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is so scary right oh my god it's just pecking like <laughs> <laughs> just right. like drilling a hole in the ground right. doing like the, the back <laughs> kick thing <laughs> dog stop that's seriously scary that's, right. that's scarier than than what we think right. they look like right now so I've been watching all these things and like this is a like I was wondering like when I'm watching all these animal videos like what is my favorite animal right and then it hit me like my favorite animal is the jaguar. I, Jaguars are dope because they're like the best of all the world. They are, the and they're cats. and they're like and the crazy thing about jaguars is like one they have the strongest they have the strongest grip strength out of all the big cats. Mm -hmm. They are like you said they are the the best of of all the different worlds because they're not as big as a lion or a tiger. They're in the middle size wise, but they're and they're not as fast as a cheetah, but they're faster than yeah. a lion or a tiger. Ooh, they're well rounded as hell, and they can swim really Dog, good. I was literally just find. I was about to find this picture of a jaguar hunting in the water. Bro, they can swim so good, and so I was watching this one about it. And the, and another crazy thing about them is where they're located at. They're they're like oh. in the America look at this nigga dog. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so, bro, jaguars are in the Americas, right? So they are in these like crazy, d dangerous habitats where there's so many other predators, and they hunt crocodiles and alligators, bro. And they, I watched this this video of this jaguar, and this jaguar was. They had been following it and it was like starving because it hadn't eaten. They were like shooting it for days and it hadn't gotten food in days, you know. And there's this part where, bruh, this jaguar is, they're so strong and good at swimming. It was literally swimming upstream wow. to get to this alligator. And there was a, there was a, like a, a alligator in the water. And then the, then the jaguar gets out and it just walks up this like hill into the you know into the the woodlands or whatever and then the camera guys are like oh dang it i don't think it saw it like ah oh, like they and they like don't want to interfere but they want him to eat because it hasn't eaten in three days so like oh he didn't see it so they keep shooting brother jaguar just comes out of nowhere jumps off the, off top, the top bro. Yeah, i seen that i seen that grabs it in the water <laughs> then they have like this struggle this fight it is dog it's yeah. so sweet and then they fight and then they're both underwater and you don't see anything and then you just see the alligator just float up dead jaguar grabs it with his teeth, bro, these alligators, crocodiles, they weigh like 200 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Bro, drags it up the hill and puts it somewhere so nothing else can get it. Like, Beast. Crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. They would be in my top five, too, I think. Yeah, man, jaguars are, are <coughs> awesome. Um, another animal I saw that I really liked, um, like, pumas are cool, too, man. They 
are small too and mm-hmm. they like they like risk their lives to get food because they have to hunt like bigger you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah they gotta hunt like wildebeest and yeah shit. I saw a puma stomped out yeah exactly <clears throat> it's exactly what I was what I saw is this yeah. mother trying to get food for her babies and she had to tackle this big giant you know what I'm saying and mm-hmm. take it down it was, it was pretty crazy wild um, out there bro animals yeah love it uh, alright man look we have been behind on recapping Ahsoka. First of all, this show has been Fire. so good. Yes. Um, just a really good payoff for people who have been have stuck around for everything like yep. Clone Wars, Rebels, especially the Rebels people. This is literally like Holy live shit, action. This one is even crazier. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that looks terrifying. <clears throat> Scary pictures of jaguars Whoa! hunting in the water. Dog. <laughs> that nigga is mad. He got whatever he was looking for, he got it. He got, that he nigga, got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, man, Jaguars, amazing, amazing hunters, amazing animals, my favorite. Um but yeah, bro, Ahsoka Episodes five, six, and seven. We left off. We last left off with the. What was it? Was it the? Um, was it the? Um, the first. It was the first showdown with Ahsoka and, uh, and Balin, Balin, yeah, which was incredible. It was like these two different styles of like a samurai and then Balin's like a a knight. He's not. He's a knight. You know he's what lit- I mean? Like everything about his character, the way like. <laughs> Even the actor that they picked. Yeah. I can't, every time I look at Balin, I'm like, bro, he needs to be in Game of Thrones. Like, that actor <laughs> needs to be in Game of Thrones. Man. Um, everything about his character is, is representing... I mean, it's very clearly... They're setting up Samurai versus versus Knight. Mm-hmm. His fighting style, uh, his presence, the way he talks, everything is very knightly. And uh, <clears throat> this fight was is amazing, the way that they were uh, changing their stances. And one of my so favorite stuff, fights. One of the best fights. But that's where we left off at, right? So then... We got episode five. Episode five was so good that they were like showing it in theaters. I'm gonna let you go because I have a I have a very controversial opinion okay. on this episode. I'll I'll let you go first. And they were showing it in theaters, and it's just kind of like, what kind of statement is that? Like that y'all about to show the episode of a TV show um, in a movie theater, right? And yeah. it's like. Episode five, uh, what did you think about it? And so this was the episode where we got um we got the interaction between Ahsoka and Anakin and we got like the live action Clone Wars flashbacks and stuff. And um I think that was was really dope. And another thing that was cool is it really showed because you know, when you see things animated, you kind of lose perception of yeah. people's age and stuff, and it just really showed how young Ahsoka was and yeah, yeah. and she was like frontline Clone Wars when yeah, she was like she was, a child she was like 15 14 yeah, yeah. years old and <clears throat> if anybody had like the right to turn to the dark side like and the fact that she didn't and the fact that she did it that's crazy Ahsoka for sure lands and she's gonna submit she's, herself as, she's, as a top five Jedi she's one of the best Star Wars characters in Ever. terms of like having a really good complete story arc, yeah, arc. For she's sure. up there maybe for sure. maybe even better than luke or anakin honestly i mean in, in my opinion she is to me because she has been in every she's been in like every important phase like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and she was like it's like i said she was like literally a frontline soldier in the clone wars as yeah. like a child child soldier for sure so here, here's what i'll say because i know i know a lot of people love this episode i i did not dislike this episode right i liked it I will say that if you are a fan of Clone Wars, <clears throat> if you're a fan of not even so much Rebels, if you're a fan of Clone Wars, this episode was it was a love letter. It was to, to, to Clone Wars to, and to was... like to Clone Wars and the fans of Clone mm-hmm. Wars, right? Um, my my critique of the episode is that I my critique of the episode it has nothing to do with the episode itself. The episode itself was fine. It was good, even. I think, however, for me, I did. I, if I had gone to see that in theaters, I think I would have been disappointed. Because mm. you, it was you wanted. I think what we thought it was going to be was like this next step in what was happening in the show, Ahsoka. 
and, and it was really like, like you said, it was like, which they always do. They always do the thing <clears> where they, <throat> in all the shows where they, they kind of pay homage to, yeah, you know, the fans. They fan little bit of fan service. This episode was was fan service for sure. It was a filler episode, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only problem, bro. It was a filler it was, episode. It was, like a, it was like a high. It, it was, was like the a high level. F- it was the episode. highest quality filler episode that you could possibly have. Right, but it was still a. Filler and it was episode. like, and are all the kind of kind of spoon feeding you Star Wars episodes? Are Man. those all filler episodes? Kind of. I mean, so here's the thing, right? Like that was that was my only. Like I, I made a I made a big fuss about this on Facebook. I'm not hating on the episode. I thought it was great. I liked I liked Clone Wars a lot. Clone Wars is not my favorite part of Star Wars, but mm-hmm. I did like it a lot, right? <clears throat> For folks who absolutely love Clone Wars, like obviously this was a great this was a great moment. My only problem, and I would have had no problem with it being a filler episode if we weren't doing the Disney Plus thing where we only got eight 30 minute long episodes. Yeah, man. We ain't a, got time for yeah, this shit, bro. Yeah. Like, if we were doing 10 hour long episodes and you gave me a 30, half of an episode that was this. Yeah. But to spend, love it. To sp- spending like such a limited, um, a limited, uh, you got such a limited time to tell the story. Right. In, in that many episodes. And, and I won't say that it was useless, right? Like, you, Ahsoka got her closure, which was important. Yeah, it was fire. I love it. the the fight with her and Anakin was it was dope. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the oh my gosh, that one shot where Anakin walks away and it and it like flashes and he turns to Darth Vader and then flashes yeah, and he turns dope. back like some dope. crazy camera work. <clears throat> Getting to see like live action Rex and all this stuff yeah. was really dope. Um, I thought it was crazy. I thought it was, I thought it was sick. And like I said, I thought the the way. Um, just putting in perspective, like how young Ahsoka was at that time, um, it, was, it was dope, man. So yeah. I really loved that episode. The fight with her and Anakin was, man, it was fire. Hayden Christensen's so good with the lightsabers. He dog. is, bro. He still, he still got <laughs> he still it, dog. Got it. And, and I love I, the fact that he went back to his style, like his yeah. flashy style, bro. And like I remember when I was a kid, I had uh, the Revenge of the Sith like special DVD, and there I remember there being this like, I'm gonna have to see if this is on YouTube, but there was this like insane uh like behind the scenes lightsaber yeah, choreography yeah. i know what practicing. you're talking about i seen that and it was anakin versus dooku but it wasn't count dooku it was uh it was maybe like, like a stuntman stunt, yeah. that was doing the and this the stuff they were doing it didn't all go in the movie but oh my goodness yeah. it was insane yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, it that. was really really dope um, but yeah, this they did another one with him and um and obi-wan as well yeah um <clears throat> But shout out to Hayden Christensen coming back playing Anakin masterfully. Uh, really, the, the the thing with Clone Wars that always kind of bothered me was Anakin's character never met his character in the show did not match his character in the movies at all. At all, it was so different. Yeah. Um. But this was cool to to see it done in this way. It was dope. Um. Episode six. Mm-hmm. Uh was also good this it's this show's been on a good run these yeah. last few episodes like four five six they've all been really yeah. good um so episode six was the episode where we finally see the long-awaited uh return of grand elon Admiral musk Thrawn. i mean Admiral <laughs> Thrawn. <laughs> that nigga look like elon musk bro He does. Yeah, he does. He looks just like him. So weird. Oh my goodness, that's so weird. I'm never gonna unsee that. There has to be somebody that's made Elon Musk look like Admiral Thrawn on on the internet. Yep. <laughs> Found it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Grand Admiral Musk. Um, but yeah, the return of Thrawn. Uh, this episode was really dope. We get to this this weird planet via um, the first of all. The hyperspace whales are one of the coolest things in Star Wars. I love them. They're so cool. And they did a good job of bringing them into this show. Um, In Rebels, I always wondered if that would ever be something that they would put on live action. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, And they've done a good job with it. But we see the return of Thrawn, who... Thrawn is, is just creepy because he's this villain that is is powerful entirely because of just his 
strategizing right. in his and yeah. how smart he is. Yep. And and he's not someone. He's not force sensitive. He doesn't fight. He's literally a just evil political mastermind and it's yep. just and it's just scary <laughs> you know what i mean yep. um so thrawn coming back was dope then we get uh for young star wars fans grand admiral thrawn <clears throat> one of the few characters that they brought from legends into mm, into the canon. into canon um darth plagueis was also one darth bane i think they've canonized mm-hmm. darth webin they've canonized Barely, barely small mentions to them, but they've been canonized. Um, and I believe we will likely see some more folks down the line yeah. get canonized. But Thrawn was one of the first big, and like that that era between the end, like the late, the mid 2000s, that era between after Re- Revenge of, or sorry, Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. originally Revenge of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi, and the beginnings of episode nine or one. Um, all those books were written. Dawn or Heir to the Empire was I don't think it was the first one, but it was the one that was considered the best in that era. And that's when they introduced Thrawn. I believe he was introduced in this. And he was the next big bad. And then they brought the Emperor Emperor back, very similarly to <laughs> episode nine. Buddy which is boy. Why people were sort of mad at that. Uh, they bring him back like three times. Can they that, not do it this time, please? And they I'm, already a little, did. I'm a little worried that they're gonna do it again. They I'm kind of bro. Wor- bro I'm, I'm, de- I'm, I'm, I wasn't, There's no fucking I wasn't way. gonna say this. Oh my god! And I was not even gonna put this out there. <laughs> I am, st- I am terrified that he is calling out to Balin's goal. I'm like terrified. Oh I hope uh, they do not. Don't do that. No, please no. I hope not. Filoni knows better than that, man. No, that's what I would think. But you know, but this episode was fire, and then we finally get the return of Ezra Bridger. Yes. Man's showed up looking like, looking like uh, Ezra Bearder. <laughs> hey, my man showed up looking like Jesus, kind of. Yeah. Um, Ezra's back. Uh, Sabine sees Ezra long awaited. He was living with these little snail people. <laughs> it's little, and you know, Star Wars always yeah. got to do the indigenous. Hey, you gotta get. Hey, I need to sell some toys. Gotta to some sell babies. some merch. The indigenous uh, people. Uh, this episode was cool, and I and I liked seeing. Um, and then obviously, you know, he sends. Um, they kind of agree to let Sabine go ahead and uh, try to go find Ezra, which again is is you just really see it thrawn is just always up to something you know what i mean he's got and, a, and he, he got a plot and bro. he he kind of just lets her go you know he gives her animal to ride on gives her a blaster gives her lights it gives gives her her lightsaber yeah that's yep. scary yeah what you because mean I, you about to just give me this right because now? I, I want you to have it right? <laughs> you know what i'm saying just creepy um lets her go out she ends up going out uh, the, the the these people um i love the way they almost look like samurai the people on this planet that mm-hmm. attack her mm-hmm. um but she, she goes out to find ezra and that was kind of the whole the whole thing of uh episode six yeah. um so this episode was was cool as well and then episode seven yeah which is what we just had which was a little was a little more of a step up um and this is now Ahsoka's coming. Ahsoka has has found uh Ezra and she joins the party. We get some action. We get um I keep forgetting what is the what's the girl's name that's with Balin? Uh starts with a S. I keep forgetting Shin. Name. Shin. So so now we get Balin and Shin and, and I love uh, I think this was back in the last episode. One of my favorite Star Wars quotes when um when she asked Balin if he missed the order. And he says, um, I miss the idea of it. Right. That was fire. Um, but then, you know, they're also, he's also starting to kind of send her on her own journey. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and we see that. And then episode seven, we get some more action. Um, we get Ahsoka. Um, and Ahsoka has like a bit of, it's a short one, but she gets a, a kind of a rematch with Balin, which was, was dope. Of course. Hold up. Go ahead. I had a problem with one thing that happened in episode, in episode seven. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Balin says to Ahsoka, and I quote, you cannot defeat me. Ahsoka replies, maybe, but I don't have to or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. 
I don't buy it because Ahsoka, not even in her prime, Ahsoka as like a 17 year old. Ahsoka is. Fought, beat. She's one of the best bro, lightsaber. She beat the, maybe a top five lightsaber duelist in the Star Wars universe, fair and goddamn square, <laughs> in the season finale of Clone Wars. Clone Wars. She flat out defeated Darth Maul in single combat by herself. And Darth Maul, it wasn't like he was bullshitting. Like, he was Darth Maulin. Yeah. And she beat him fair and square. And you mean to tell me that unless Balin is like a is like a Obi-Wan Kenobi tier Jedi, which mm. which there's not many. Like, if you weren't, like, I don't, if you weren't on the Jedi Master Council, I'm not going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're on Obi-Wan's level. Right. He, not, there's only like two or three, you got... You got Plu Kloon, perhaps. You got Yoda for sure. You got um, Mace Windu for sure that are on his level. But that's it. Like, who mm-hmm. else on the, in like the Jedi Council would have been on his level? Right. Kit Fisto, maybe. But I, even him, I don't think so. So, like, unless Balin was on that level, there's no way Ahsoka would not have defeated him. Yeah. Just by the transitive property, bro. Like, right. unless not- Ahsoka is like really washed nah, at this point so is the dog She's, right like come on what are we doing yeah i don't i didn't uh, that's interesting that you bring that up I don't did know she just need it like a snappy line uh, yeah or what? maybe like <laughs> maybe like no nah, nigga i'll wash uh, you bro <laughs> only reason why you beat me last time is because i had one hand facts right and, and you barely won and that fight was so good right um and this was dope and then we and then sabine um uh, facing off with um shin and then also ezra too helping out against the the troopers in Ezra doing the force thing, which which Bro, with the the which, force wing chun, which we love. Yes, yeah. uh, Ezra is a monster with the force. If you watch Rebels, yes. he is very powerful. Um, I you know what? Small detail. I I'm loving the lightsaber stopping, or I'm loving yeah, the force the stopping the lightsaber. Yeah, and, and then was, when they do it, you see the lightsaber like, like be affected yeah, by yeah, it. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. so cool. They who was <clears throat> Vader? That was the Vader, first time we saw Vader that, was right? doing that when he was literally. Obi-Wan. Or to uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, Re- Reba was that her name? Yeah, the uh, man, yeah, the, oh, um, the Inquisitor chick. Yeah, that I was love that scene. That was really dope. I I love that's a cool. That's one of the coolest. Um, that's one of the best like new little nuances that they've added to like Star Wars combat. Yeah, the f- force the challenging force, the, the lightsabers. So here, I uh, it's not insider knowledge, but I I, I heard slash read something that that didn't leak but that was shown at star wars celebration i'd love to go to that one day that, that would be cool to go to yeah um that they showed a trailer for the acolyte which i'm i'm super, super excited, excited about for. that too. super excited and that's that takes place before that's an old show this is high i'm i don't love the high in the, the, the we've talked about this the mm-hmm. high republic era like i just don't believe i don't give star wars benefit of the doubt to think that that wasn't just for them to still have an excuse to show Yoda young. Yeah. Like I just, I really feel like that was the deciding That's factor. What, yeah. Which is so fucking corny, bro. You don't need, you don't, need, Star these, Wars. You don't need these characters no more. Bro, we love, we, Star Wars has like infinite, like good, goodwill. I don't care how much people have hated right. it. It's always going to be fine. Like just do something just do else. Some new stuff, man. Anyways, but yes, it'll be in the High Republic era. But from what I heard or what was reported, the, the trailer, featured a force martial art scene where two where the acolyte who's played by Amanda Amanda Le Steinberg's character who we think is going to be the main character yeah. has a scrap with another Jedi and does it by way of like she has a dagger she doesn't have a lightsaber she has a dagger and she's like they're like force wing tonguing each other. Oh like, my gosh. That shit I sounds amazing, bro. Wait, that sounds incredible. Yeah. Uh and it would also be really dope if you know, this is kind of showing us what that could maybe look like a little bit, yeah. you know, with, yeah, with yeah. some of the stuff that we're seeing in these shows. Um, but yeah, this episode was good. I loved it. Um, and, you know, we just waiting on the next one. Is this the next one the last one? It is. It ah. is. So it's, you see what I'm saying now? Like, I love the callback and I love the the fan service, but we, we got we to gotta get it popping a little bit, man. We got to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Somebody said... Like somebody in that stupid ass group that we're in said, like when they heard my complaint, they were like, "Oh, not everything needs to be character A goes to character B and does thing C." And I was like, "Bro, ordinarily you're right, but if we only got eight episodes and they're thirty minutes each, 
nigga, yes. They every episode has to be character A goes to place B and does thing C. Every single episode. It has to. Every single one. Right? Like Jeez. we only we gotta we gotta get it popping here. We can't waste time. Um Agreed. So that's all. Uh, isn't uh, the little girl who was in Logan in the Acolyte too? Yes, she and she's not a little. She's, she's, not, like, she's like she's like 18, twenty maybe now, twenty. Yeah. yeah, something like that. She's grown. Yeah, she's in that show too. This she was uh, yo. Since now you're 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 into science fiction now, yeah. I recommend that you check out the the show. Uh, oh fuck, I forgot the name of it. Now, but she's <laughs> she's in that show. Um, his oh, dark she's, she's his, his dark materials. Oh, uh, she's okay. the star of that show. His dark material. It's really really good. Let's. And All like right, con- like it spiritual, out. it's like sci-fi, but there's some spirituality in it as well. And from what I know about you, I think you would fuck with it. Like I'm gonna check it out. Just to give you, since you're into animals now, there's like the 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 hook or the one of the defining factors of the show is that in this world, everybody has a, a quote unquote demon, mm. which is like an animal spirit that they're connected to. Oh, that, that and it's not a spirit; it's like dope. a literal animal that can talk. That they are their life force is connected to. That sounds like something I would love. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. What's it on? His Dark Material. It's on HBO Max. Oh, yeah. Good. I got one of the 20 streaming things I have. Cool. Yep. Um, all right. I was on uh, Twitter and, or what do they call it now? Ah, whatever. It's Twitter. It's, it's Twitter, bro. It's Twitter. Um, and I saw this post. As a matter of fact, said, get Elon Musk out of here. And it's <laughs> and it said, um, it said that. Regardless of how people feel about Rise of Skywalker, the opening scene is one of the best Agreed. scenes in all of Star Wars. I that's agree. where that's where <laughs> Kylo Ren hits the <laughs> the yoga fire Bug, that mo- nigga, moon yoga, walk. Yoga, yoga fire. <laughs> that nigga hit a uh, quarter circle back <laughs> hard punch, nigga. <laughs> so which that scene is fire where he's looking for the Sith holocron. Right wait, now. wait, hold on, hold on. Here's hey, the, hey, hey. Well, actually, this uh, is the nerdiest question ever. That move that Kylo Ren did, as people who play, played a lot of fighting games, do you think that's what? What's the input command for that? Is it a quarter circle move, or is it? A, <laughs> oh, that's that's it. But is is it a charge? It's a charge is it because a charge? of how far it goes. Yeah, bro. That's a that's a nigga. Hold back for two seconds. Forward B, nigga. <laughs> It's, de- it's uh, definitely a charge. That's one of them. That's one of them Vega. Uh, <laughs> that nigga be jumping around yes, the screen, bro. That's, that's a definitely charge a charge move. move. Um, so I was gonna ask you, what is your favorite opening scene in a Star Wars movie? Um, oh, man, that one. But also, you know, what gives it a run for its money. Um, the first, the opening scene of the Force Awakens. What is the opening scene in Force Awakens? When Kylo. Oh my gosh, where he stops the blaster bolt with his hand, bro. And just, just like, Jeez. put yourself in that in that space. The goosebumps that bro. you have, like after years of and no there Star had Wars, been no Star Wars, bro. I still say it, and I stand by it. I don't think he should have ever took his helmet off until the last movie. Fair, 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 fair. He was so cool. Yeah. In yeah. Force Awakens, man. He was so cool. The Force. He was the Force. Oh, my god! The, the Force. Uh, Zion Williamson. Up, just upside, bro. bro. Like, stopping. His voice was yeah. scary. He yeah. looked sweet. His helmet was sweet. And, the, and then... <sighs> The, the opening scene of Force Awakens is very good. Yeah. He shoots the blaster bolt, turns around, stops it, and then it just stays there. Yeah, and, and he, he just walks. he stops. He stops oh paying attention God. to and it, he, and he just it just hangs there. Right, bro. And he then, got it under and control. And then when he walks away, he just lets it go. Oh my goodness, man. that's sick. So so good. Ben Solo, man. Ben Solo had the midi chlorians, <laughs> dog. Had that had count, the, that high the, count. Yeah, the high midi chlorine. Right. <laughs> um, my. Ooh, my favorite opening scene in Star Wars. That is a really dude. Uh, Force Awakens is really good. Battle of the Hoth. That's a good one too. The Battle of Hoth. It's a really good. That one. whole, that whole just that every that just the going just going from like what New Hope was and all the desert stuff. Yep. And then starting this movie off on a snow planet, yeah, which yeah. you hadn't seen, and then you see like ATATs and like mm-hmm. snow speeders. Bro, you remember that that, that the that beginning of, the beginning of Empire is my favorite part. It's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's fire. Do you remember that the level in um uh what was that the game on sixty four? Oh, Shadows, of, Shadows the of the Empire. Empire yes, where you had to you had to do Battle of the Hall. You had to do the um. Bro, it was that I remember being a kid and that shit was so was fucking hard, hard, dog. 
That to, game was fun, though. It was fun, but I remember being like, bro. And then right uh, after what was that. The, what was the name of Dash Rendar ship? The Outrider. The Outlier. Outrider, I think. Something like that. Yeah. It was a sweet name. I remember shit. right after that, you had to fucking fight an AT, ATST in a in a on the ground yeah you remember that yeah that game was fun though i, yeah. I actually used to really and then that. like after you finished that part you had to go into the base and so so keep in mind this game suggests that dash rendar was a part of the battle of the hulk like yeah. he was one of the people in the, this in oh because he was you know they were weren't they ready to they were replace gonna replace Han Solo because yeah. we didn't know if he was. Harrison Ford was like, "Bro, this shit, this Star Wars shit weird." Bro. <laughs> like, he never had time for Star Wars, bro. Like, whatever, this shit weird, dog. Like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this shit. Go get me another another knockoff nigga, and we'll we'll put him in my place. But um, um that's that's. Hilarious. But yes, they they created Dash Rendar specifically to replace. Han Solo. Han Solo. It, it's it's literally the reason why he's just basically Han Solo. <laughs> he's slightly more ghetto uh, from a more, slightly worse, worse part, part of the hood <laughs> than <laughs> than Han Solo. <laughs> um, I think, and you know, this is my favorite movie too. But I still really love the opening scene of um, Phantom Menace where they go and they're supposed to do the negotiations, and then uh, the Chancellor tells the the viceroy and them to kill him. Oh, so they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. So it's like right off the bat, this hadn't been Star Wars since the eighties. Mm -hmm. You could see young Obi Wan, Qui Gon. Qui Gon. It's like this is when they. That's when they drop in through the through the um. That's the elevator. when they try to. Um, this is where they try to like they put the gas in there, and then you see them. Uh, they fight off the droids, and then uh, Qui Gon tries to cu uh, cut through the door. Then you get the destroyers coming. Ah, out. yeah, yeah. That, that that opening of that movie yeah, is cool. fire. There's a lot of good stuff in there. You see uh, Sidious on the. You instantly get to see Darth Sidious on the on the hologram. Um, and you just see how scared the other politicians are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I love the opening of uh, Phantom Menace. Do you too. remember? I, so I remember not being surprised at all, and being very surprised that other people were surprised. Oh, that, that he was uh, that Palpatine. Palpatine was Sidious. I feel like yeah. didn't we know that ahead of time? I feel like I, I don't think we did, but it was. It seemed obvious. It as fuck was to me. obvious as like a nine year old. Yeah, right? I wasn't like a super. It's not like I'm a grown ass man, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, no. Nah, it seemed it was definitely. Uh, it was definitely. There for especially at the end of the movie where they where he says, and "You young Skywalker, we will watch your career with great interest." Right. And then he does that creepy Palpatine smile. I remember talking to my dad about it, and I was like, in, "That's that's the Emperor, isn't it?" Right. And my dad was like, "I don't know, because <laughs> you know how you at that age you think your parents like know the answer and, definitively, the right. answer to everything, and they don't." And he was like, "Dog, I don't fucking know. What, <laughs> I have no idea." Was like, because my you gotta understand, my dad was like. Uh, in his in his youth, in his like prime, when Star Wars was Star Wars, mm -hmm. and then he was excited to take me to see Phantom Menace, but he was kind of like, "Bro, what the fuck is this shit? Like, <laughs> why are they do it? Like, what is it, it, you know, just the typical old person reaction to like? Why is it so different? Like, what's what is happening right now? Yeah. Um, so I don't know that he was super into it, but whatever, Dad, it wasn't for you. <laughs> Speaking of Star Wars and sci fi movies, a Long awaited movie I have been anticipating for a long time came out. Yes. The Creator. If you have not seen The Creator, spoiler see. alert <laughs> ahead. <laughs> the Creator, man. What'd you think? I thought it was excellent, bro. I thought it was very good. At, um, keep it 100. I have to ask you this question. Do not lie. Just keep it real, man. Yeah. Did you cry? You get a tear? Did you get a little tear? <laughs> I the, uh, I felt awesome. I experienced emotion. Okay, I will say I don't okay. know that I cried, but I definitely had an I had experienced some emotion. Okay, um, okay. I will say that I was. I, I'll say this: I only watched the trailer once um, on purpose, right? Like it, same. You know, they it was hard to avoid it because it was on every commercial. After same, a while. same. Um, hey, I am uh, me having limited trailer. I've been doing this for like maybe two years now where I don't watch the trailers. I just watch the first one. And yep. sometimes if I can even not watch that one, I don't even watch that one. It has really enhanced my movie yeah, experiences. Bro, I'm trying to tell um, y'all, bro, stop watching trailers. I'm going into the, the movies a little blind. Sometimes to see the first um, 
quick trailer. Uh, but it's not it's not where I'm seeing. So I'm going into these movies and being surprised by a lot of this stuff, and it yes. just makes it better. It does absolutely. This is what I've been trying to tell folks for so long. Trailers outside of the first teaser, and even sometimes that's too much. Mm-hmm. They they really ruin for me the way that I like to to receive narratives, right? Right. Whether it's a story, a game, a TV show, whatever. The way I like to receive stories. I need there to be no I I don't I don't want to have any expectations other than my own facts Um, because it really affects how how I receive it. So with that in mind, this was a time where I think I wouldn't say it it didn't hurt me. Definitely didn't hurt me because they ended up loving the movie. But the fact that I had so little information made me feel a thing in the very beginning, like the first half hour. I was like, I wasn't not enjoying it. It was great. But I was confused. I was like, I, I'm not sure what I thought was going to happen, but I don't I, know. That's really weird because I was the exact same yeah. way. I was watching it, and I and I was saying to myself, like, I'm I, not sure what I was expecting. But I don't think it was this. I don't think it was this. What is this? What right, doing right, right, right. You know what I right. mean? But I will say, though, and so, again, it wasn't a bad thing, mm. but I was I was a little worried. I was a little nervous that, like, huh, I wonder if is it, I was nervous that, like, it could potentially go a direction that I wasn't, that I was hoping it might not go mm. in, and then I might not like it as much as I thought I would or I want to. Because I, I went into this movie with the expectation that I would like it a lot. Mm. Um, now, but when we finally got to plot lift, lift off, which was... And again, spoilers. And I, and because because it just came out, I'm really gonna go into light spoilers, mm-hmm. but very light spoilers. But when we find the child, mm-hmm. and I'll say no more than that. When the plot li- that was what I would say is plot lift. Plot off. lift off. I was in, bro. I was like, okay, I get like it took me a minute to get like to the see world. What, what we were doing? In like, the what world. do we what, what we got going on yeah, here? Yeah. Right. I, but once I finally here. got there, I was like, all right, bet. Let's go. Yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it 100. percent And it, and from there, it did not disappoint at all i was the same way um very interesting that we had that same exact feeling probably around the same parts too because yeah. i started to get really interested at the part that you said you did too um and yeah from there it was it was great it was you know you see I, first of all this movie looks amazing yeah. this yeah. is it's such a a beautiful looking movie yeah. the effects were Incredible. Off the chain. This yeah. is some of the best CGI I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, so often you see cyberpunk Tokyo in, in Japan. <clears throat> this was like one of the first times I've ever seen a. This was like a cyberpunk South Asia kind of. South Asia. Yeah, I read something that it didn't dawn on me, and now that now that I re- now that I read it, I'm I feel like an idiot for not noticing the first time. It's I, super duh. But it's like it's almost like Vietnam. Yeah, like exactly. It's, it's a very clear, and this is another spoiler. <laughs> light spoiler. It's a very clear Vietnam allegory. Mm-hmm. The whole movie. Yeah. And it's like, oh, of course it is. I'm a fucking idiot for not not immediately. But I'm nigga. I'm not. Four, I'm not sixty. Like right. I. <laughs> like that's not at the. T- <laughs> like Vietnam as a as a motif is not something that I think about all the time. Right. So. Right. So um, no, it was, and um, it was just. It was it was it was dope. It was a very interesting take on AI. Loved all the the war scenes were yeah. good. The they did a good job of um really just this just like making this idea work. I think it's important that people go see this movie because as much as people complain about oh nobody does any original stuff or yeah. stop remaking stuff, yep. if you want that to happen, you have to support original movies like this. Yes. This is a very fresh movie it's not something that we've seen all over and over again this was good and it was uh as i said before it took me a minute to get into you know get into it at like a high level once i figured out where the story was going and what we were doing but once it does i was you know glued to it and i was Emotionally invested too, as yeah, you man. said, it was very. It, it got me emotionally yeah. too. Um, it was I'll say good, this, bro. Hey, dog, I, t- I sent novelist this text, nigga. Death. Oh, wait, do I still have my? <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. Death. Taxes. 
and Ken Watanabe acting his fucking ass off oh my God. at any given opportunity. Bro, he only had like bro, 20 lines in this movie. He's such a good actor. But bro. every single one of them was an Oscar was an Oscar trophy. He's every single so one, bro. Good. He's just amazing. He's so good. I love Ken Watanabe, yeah, man. I I really want I need he's getting older, man. He just have you seen the Unforgiven remake with him? Yes. The Samurai remake? Yep, yep. Uh, that movie's really good. Yep. Um, but yeah, I love him. He's he's great. He's one of my favorite actors. He was man. fantastic in this. Um, so here's what I... So, and you know, everybody's got a list of people that they want to see in a Star Wars movie. Quick, quick. Just a quick detour. Top three people you want to see in a Star Wars movie that don't... That I don't want to see in a Star Wars movie. Yeah. <laughs> John David Washington. <laughs> <laughs> hey man hell yeah I'd love to see John David Watson in a Star Wars movie I would love to see Andrew Koji in a Star Wars movie mm-hmm. and I would love to see oh you know what I'd love to see Jason Momoa in a Star Wars movie too hey. oh, I think no, he, he would be like a good I think he would be not even a Jedi I think he'd make a good a good oh, Sith. Sith sure yeah. I was gonna say he could play even though I would allow Jason Momoa cause he's brown I was gonna say, even though this character is clearly black with locks. Uh, oh, uh, Kaylin Voss. Kay- Kaylin Voss, yeah, yeah. Quinlan Voss, or yeah, whatever his Quinlin name is. Quinlan Voss, I think is. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, so yeah, for me, it would be one of these is not gonna be for you because I know you don't watch the show, but it'll be for the folks who who it's for. They'll know. One would definitely be Ken Watanabe as an old Jedi oh master. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, the other would be. Uh, I don't. I'll just skip to the the one that I really. So, <laughs> um, Charles Dance, who is better known as the person who plays Tywin Lannister from from Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Um, I will just, just ho- hold on. Just look at this nigga. <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm looking from here, and he looks like he just, just looks look like at this nigga. He bro. just looks like he would be on on the Death Star. Bro, this commanding people. <laughs> either either he would be a grand moth or he would be just the most dastardly fucking Sith Lord bro, of all time, yeah. bro. He just definitely a, looks like a grand moth though. You gotta hear him talk though, man. Like he's got this <laughs> he's got the he's like a more so you know how Darth Sidious is sort of like unhinged and goofy? Yeah. He's like a serious Bro, he really is goofy though, and nobody <laughs> no, he's he is. A, yeah, no, he's goofy as fuck. He's goofy, ah! bro. <laughs> he's just a he's a cackling <laughs> madman. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited <laughs> power! <laughs> no. Oh my god! Anyways, Tywin Lannister for Sith Darth Tannis Darth Tyrannister. This guy. There you go. Darth Tyrannister. <laughs> All right. Uh, where were we? Hiro Yuki Sonata too. Old Jedi Master. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, him? No, no, stop. No, 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 no. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my Ken gosh, Watanabe dude. as the Jedi Master, bro, and um, Hiroki Sonata as the fallen apprentice who is bro, now a, a Sith. Sith. <laughs> Call David Filoni <laughs> right, right now. now. And they, oh man, wow, boom, man, good stuff, man. Uh, all right, man. So the creator was fire. I loved it. Yes, go see it. It was good. Now the next movie on my horizon, Rebel Moon. Yes, man. sir. Cannot Rebel wait Moon. for Rebel Moon. Time for the top five of the day. We've been talking a lot about sci-fi. We love sci-fi movies. Mm-hmm. Give me your top five favorite. Sci-fi movies of all time, but you cannot include Star Wars. Yes. We love Star Wars, man, but everybody <clears throat> knows we love Star Wars. We want to get some shine on some other sci-fi movies. Yep. No Star Wars, top five favorite sci-fi movies of all time. What now, you as you happen to know, star- science fiction is a bit of a speciality for your boy. Yes. <clears throat> I've been in these Star Wars, these science fiction streets for, <laughs> for a long time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um. So with that said, I am eliminating the Matrix because what? Everybody, <laughs> I know we, you everybody know, knows you that's going to be my number one, you right? Love it, so you love it. it's predictable. We're gonna we're gonna put the Matrix at the number zero spot. Everybody knows uh, that's my time. I like that. Um. So we're gonna have the other the other note here is that I have nine honorable mentions, <laughs> <laughs> and I have to talk about all of them. 
Um, just because I mean, yo, I've been I'm very happy that that brother novelist is finally here in the sci-fi world. I've been trying, I've been nudging him for years. He has, and I've been watching so many movies lately, and I really yeah. love sci-fi stuff. It's good. I, I'm an action junkie, and sci-fi has become this genre where I enjoy it, even if there's not a lot of action. Yeah, same. Which that's not the case for me in a lot of stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? Agreed. Um, most of these have action, but some of them. There's my number. My new number one has. I've talked about it on this episode before. I almost banned this one too because I've talked about it a few times. Mm. Um, but it's it's there is an incredible action scene, but it's not really about the action. Right. Um. <clears throat> so my first honorable mention is the Riddick series. Wow. If you yeah. have not, what have is, you? Is, there's is three pit, of them. Is Pitch Black a Riddick movie? That's the first one. Okay. Pitch Black. Chronicles of Riddick, that's my favorite one. Pitch, Pitch Black and Chronicles of Riddick are both excellent. Mm. I like Chronicles of Riddick slightly more because Pitch Black is more like a hor- quote unquote horror movie. It has a similar transition between like Alien and Aliens. Pitch okay. Black is like Alien and uh, Chronicles like of Riddick a, is like the Aliens. Up, up, up it's just action more. And... They just it just kind of buys into the like fantasy action world a little mm. bit and just kind of goes crazy. That's interesting. <clears throat> And I think you would love it just because the action. I, you know what? I saw Pitch Black when it first came out, but I have not. It's been so long. I might. Um, those dope. might be. Those to me, might this be is some movies that I go back and check out. Yeah, that's Vin, uh, Vin Diesel. Vin right? Diesel. This is Vin Diesel's best role, in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. I know we love. He loves his fa- fa- uh, Fast and Furious roles, and Fast and Furious is a big dumb explosion. It's fun if that's what you're into, and and the movies are fun. Some of them are. But so there's three. There's Pitch Black, Chronicles of Riddick, and then Riddick. Is Chronicles of Riddick the second one? That's the second one. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't know that Chronicles of Riddick was a sequel to Pitch Black. So I saw Pitch Black. I don't know if I saw Chronicles of Riddick though. Chronicles of Riddick is dope. Okay. Because because Vin, Vin Diesel is like, I don't know that he has a martial arts background, but he's he's doing some tech in this shit, mm-hmm. and he's he looks good doing it, man. Like he. Well, yeah, he was around that time. He was a legit action. Yeah, he was guy. like a full on action star, mm-hmm. and he was. This was like in shape Vin Diesel. He a little. He done hit the beer a little bit in the in the late days of uh, <laughs> the beer a little bit. Uh, in the late days of the of the Fast and Furious series. But this was like jacked, like wrestler Vin Diesel sort of. Um, he's he's really good in these sidebar. Films. Sorry, didn't they do like an anime for Pitch Black? I think they did, and I can't remember if I saw it or not. But I think they I did. remember it in high school. I think they there did. was a, I don't know if it was a movie or a show though. I don't think it was a. Sh- it might have been like an anime, like a little short, yeah, like a little thing. OVA. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like look that. into that. Um, also, didn't do any anime on this list, but I could have easily put yeah a bunch. for sure. Um, so my next one again, the a lot of these are series. I really there's like 20 movies on my on my. Uh, <laughs> I love sci-fi movies. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> so, so the Riddick series, my recommendation out of that bunch is the Chronicles of Riddick. That's my favorite one. The Cloverfield series. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I so I actually loved. Um, I actually loved Cloverfield. The yes, first the, the first one is my favorite one. I don't know if I saw the... Is there two or three? There's three now. I don't know if I saw the other two. So Cloverfield and then there's Cloverfield Lane. I remember that's the one where... Uh, that was the one that was on Netflix, right? Yes. I didn't uh, see no, that. no, no. That's the third one. Oh, okay. Um, The second one is... It came out in theaters. It was like... Uh, it was like, like a safe house kind of situation. Yeah, where the girl... Yeah. They takes the girl in and yep. try like they're trying to keep her from something outside. And yeah, it it's a I, I like I'm actually have to check it out. Because I actually really liked the first one. So But and so a lot of people started to get mad at um and I know he doesn't have the greatest reputation now. Um what's what's our guy's name with the glasses who did the first JJ Abrams. Mm-hmm. But this is when he was like he had like more good grace than he does now. But people started to kind of get tired of his his mystery box shtick at this point. But I, it it works for me, man. I like it. I like his style of storytelling. I like. I also really really like um, uh, the guy who did episode eight, who whose name suddenly I can't remember. Um, Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. I love yeah. his storytelling Rian style. Jo- Is it Ryan Johnson or Ryan Johnson? I don't know. Whatever. It's Whatever. spelled weird, okay. but. Um, <laughs> I love their storytelling styles. I'm going to watch their movies. They work for me. Whatever. Um, 
But yeah, so Cloverfield, and but the way that he like taught, because you don't, when you see each of the three of these movies, except for the third one, the third one is a little bit more transparent, but the first and second one seem like they're completely different movies that have nothing related to each other. That's what I thought. <clears throat> but. But they are related. If you take a fucking microphone, micro, uh, <laughs> fucking magnifying glass on that motherfucker and turn it sideways and put it into the sunlight the right way, you'll see a very, a very slight a minuscule, uh, connection between them. I am very interested in this. When but we the, get off, when we get done with this, I want, I want to know more yeah, about yeah. this. And they talk, they, and there's like, he, he was doing like this, this like AR, like meta campaign where there was like websites that you could go to and like, Oh my gosh, inc- that's yeah. incredible. It was marketing. super fucking nerdy, dog. I was into it. I was totally into <laughs> it. All right, next one Ex Machina. Ah, uh, I have not seen that either. I'm familiar. But I think I'm that's Alex it. Garland. I believe this is the same person who did Arrival. I think. Let me just double check that. No, uh, Arrival was done by the. Uh, not Alex Garland, the other guy. Um, villain, villain, villain. Charlie, uh, yes. Denis uh, Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Yeah. Um, Ex Machina. That dude is insane. Alex Garland. Oh, sorry. Alex Garland did the other one, Extinction. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, <clears throat> yes. So, uh, sorry, not Extinction. Annihilation. Annihilation. You, knew the, you know what I was talking I've about. I've seen Annihilation. That movie is nuts. Yes. Shout so, out to Nick. Nick put me on that movie. Uh, and I'm sure if Nick would, he would also recommend Ex Machina. Ex Machina. I'm certain. So same person who put, did Annihilation did Ex Machina. Put very, it very on good. my list. On it's Letterboxd. A, it's one of the best like AI. Follow me on Letterboxd, guys. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> one of the best like AI um, movies. Movies. Okay. That there is, in my opinion. Just added it to my list. Um, speaking of AI movies, Creator. I know it's early, but <sighs> Creators it deserves an honorable mention, bro. It it's, is. It's we fantastic. need to see like we need to see an older Alfie. Versus mm. L from Stranger Things. Mm. We need that. We need that older, like tuned up in the gym a little bit, working on the on the powers. Alfie, yeah. Versus L from Stranger Things. Damn, I was about to say something about Alfie that would have been a major spoiler. So I'm, I'm gonna save it. <laughs> I'll save it for next week. We'll talk. We'll revisit this. I'll talk about it next week. Alfie had a little <laughs> aim to her. To yeah, me. facts, Love bro. Love that character, facts. man. Love that character. All right, I'm almost done with my honorable. Yo, mentions. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> and the creator when they, when, they, when they were when they were driving in that car and it, and it got in was all crazy and then oh, he was like, y'all have fun and that little one kid was like, <laughs> <laughs> that movie was sneaky funny, bro. It was it was a lot funnier than I thought it was gonna be. It was, man. It was um, good. That was good, man. Yeah. So no, uh, I don't know. This is not even. I'm not even numbers yet. Sorry, I'm gonna go quicker. Uh, another honorable mention: District Nine. Neil Blomkamp. District Nine is good. You know, the creator had a little District Nine to it. It kind of reminded yes. me of it a it little. It had bit. a similar like like. Um, I don't know what it was. Maybe yeah. yeah. I don't know what it was. Not really story elements. No, but but if it seemed like a similar it type of world. Reminded me of that. You know what it really reminded me of in terms of like a similar feel for the world is Neil Blomkamp's other movie. Uh, Chappie. Never seen that. It's 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 not that similar to Creator, but it's by the same. It feels a lot like District Nine has the same like look. Uh, okay. Hey, Neil Blomkamp was also supposed to do an Alien movie. Like, can you imagine like his his like visual style yeah, in Alien? That would be cool. That would be really dope. It just it, it <clears throat> feels realistic, for sure. Yeah, District Nine was really dope. Still waiting on that sequel, District 10. What up? It's been like fucking 11 <laughs> it's been years. Like it's been like 15 years, years actually. <laughs> um, uh, I already talked about Creator. Alien, that's one of my favorites also. Hey. Um, in preparation for Creator, I recommend it to novelist that he watched Tenet. And he hey. It was fire. Tenet is so fire. And I don't want to hear nothing about I all of a sudden Nolan movie. lost his touch. Nope. Y'all loved all his other movies. No, we finna show this movie the same love. I love that movie. We so not much. finna start critiquing him hard as hell now that he got a black actor. Now not gonna be able to do it. Nope. Love hey. that. No. Not gonna be able to do it. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> um, not gonna be able to do it. Blade Runner series. Ooh. Now I will say this is gonna upset all of the film nerds. I slightly prefer Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh, me too. Blade Runner twenty forty nine is is, is it's <laughs> excellent. Absolutely excellent. Same guy, man. Denny Villeneuve. Denny Villeneuve. Um, Dune. Um, Dog, Dune. Um, Blade Runner 2049. 2049. Arrival. Right. This guy's great. Arrival, he's really good. 
Dune is also uh, the new Dune is also on my that almost broke into my that's like number six it almost broke into my top bro I love that movie so much (laughs) and then ever since I read the book I've really yeah I love Dune I'm very excited for this second movie Dune has become one of my favorite things yes which is crazy but so Dune is is all it's like right on the outside looking in Snowpiercer also oh that's the movie with um, uh, Chris Evans yes I did not see that either there's so many movies I have to now that movie is fire and it's got some action to it it's got a little couple of little gritty fight scenes in it too oh no I already know when you see that movie I can guarantee I can tell you who I can promise you who your favorite character is gonna be I already know judging by looking uh, (laughs) I'm sure we're thinking of the same person I gotta watch this it's good it's a really it's a really dope concept too oh Somebody on Letterboxd said the best Captain America movie. <laughs> uh, he's he's excellent in this film, though. Chris like, Evans is solid, man. He's yeah. just, it's hard when an actor plays a character so well and you just strictly yeah. identify them as that person and it's hard to, like, shake that. But no, He's a good-ass actor. He is a good actor, man. I love Chris Evans. Yeah. All right, finally into the top five. Let's go! That's um, a lot of honorable mentions. Man. I know, bro. I, I literally had, like, 15 <laughs> um so number five bro i did i am going to pick one but i have listed here the apes trilogy ah. about them. i will pick one for this for the sake of being fair i will go with the rise of the planet of the apes because that's hey. the one with the goddamn apes on tanks <laughs> on horses with fucking ak's human work you know what i'm saying uh human work cobra Killer. That's such a sick name. One of the greatest villains ever, bro. It's not anti-hero. Not even really a full villain, bro. Come on. He's Magneto, just a little more a little more unhinged. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. So number five, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Number four, I know a lot of people. Yeah, I hate I hate motherfuckers sometimes, especially (laughs) like in the in the like film nerd elitist community there's this thing that happens where everybody loves a movie and then like there's like this sentiment of it's cool or hip or or like fucking i don't know uh i'm sophisticated or elevated by going back and retroactively calling this movie garbage Mm. because yeah i need to it goes both ways or even the revisionist it's sure he's always been uh we just we're talking about that with uh andrew garfield Yes. No, you know y'all hated Andrew y'all hate, Garfield. Y'all hated him, and you made him feel like crap. And I remember catching hell for being Me one too. of the only that people loved who loved that those movie. movies, man. Come now, on, man. I admit the second one wasn't my favorite, the but the first one was, was fire. Was I so loved it. Yeah. I immediately walked out the theater and was like, yo, this shit was better than... Yeah, bro. No, it wasn't better than Spider-Man 2, but I definitely liked it better than the first one and the third... Certainly mm, better than I the third one. better than all the live-action Spider-Man movies, but that's I, just me. I think Spider-Man 2 was... It was... They were similar in the same... T- anyways... Um, this what I'm talking about is Inception. Uh, Inception, look, bro, Christopher Nolan, another guy. Oh, we're getting tired of Christopher Nolan's shit and blah 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 blah. He's too smart for he wants I to be saw. smarter than he really is. Whatever. So one of my favorite things on Letterbox is reading other people's reviews because there's always just hilarious ones. And somebody gave Tenet five stars, and the review was. Christopher Nolan wants to have sex with time and we should just let him. <laughs> I agree. Um, look, man, I like Christopher Nolan's. There are some people whose oh artistic gosh. vision works for me. And mm-hmm. a lot of the times these are folks that come under fire a lot. One of these people is, I talk, like, I, like I said, Ryan Johnson, love his storytelling style, works for me. J.J. Abrams, most of the time his storytelling style works for me. Christopher Nolan. Another one is um, oh, we talk about him all the time in the Discord. Uh, Snyder, Zack Snyder. Look, I'm sorry. Like I know the Snyder cut niggas have made everybody look at him kind of sideways and whatever, but I like Zack Snyder's vision. Like I think he, I like his art usually. I didn't love Batman versus Superman. I thought it was a lot of studio interference that turned it into a shitty movie, and they made a bad decision by trying to rush into the Avenger stage already. Mm-hmm. Didn't need to do that. But Man of Steel, really good movie. Don't even like I don't even like Superman, but that movie was dope. Zack Snyder, I his storytelling style works for me. Same with Christopher Nolan. Inception was fucking awesome. I had nobody had seen anything like that since like The Matrix. It was just a really, really interesting and it wasn't 
for you, and it's usually the the people who end up like feeling some type of way are niggas who like think that they're really really smart but didn't fully understand Inception <laughs> and and furthermore thought that it was bad writing because they didn't get it. Right. Like, nah, bro, it wasn't that complicated. You just wasn't paying attention. Mm. Like, it wasn't that ten it also not that complicated of a film. It wasn't that convoluted, right? Like, y'all niggas just gotta yeah pay attention. I didn't really get to talk about uh, my experience with Tenet. First of all, I love that movie. I watched it finally, and it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I didn't, and I texted you this too. I said, I didn't, I'm not trying to sound like a, you know, super smart guy or nothing, but I actually just kind of got it. There was just a point in the movie, um, and I'll talk to you about this after, but because I would love to know where the point of where it was for you. Yeah. But there was just kind of a point where, you know, it just, it just started to make sense and I just got it. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I kind of understood the movie. I didn't really have a, a hard time understanding it. So yeah, uh, I it, thought it was fire. I love it. For sure. Inception, same way. I love Leonardo DiCaprio. I love um, uh, Tom Hardy. Those two of my favorite actors. Tom they Hardy's were, great. They both acted their asses off. I love Tom Hardy grunting <laughs> in Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road. That's probably an honorable mention honorable for me mention. as well. I like that movie a lot. Um, yeah, Inception, bro. I won't, I'm not here for Inception. Slander was a good movie. I don't care what y'all motherfuckers say. Like, and I think another critique is that people say like, "Oh, it was trying to be smarter than what it was." Like, no, it was. It wasn't trying to be anything. It was as smart or as dumb as it was. It was what it was. And right. if you had trouble receiving what it was given off, that's your problem, not the movies. Because Very I'm not a movie like expert. I know movies pretty well, and I probably know them enough to be a cri- a critic if I wanted to. But I, nigga, I understood the shit. Right. So <laughs> what that say about you? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to went to film school and you didn't understand hey, the shit. That sounds like that's understand. a you problem, dog. Not me. Hey man, boy, I just got mad as hell at film nerds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I had to straighten up in my chair. The whole oh, ass niggas talking gosh. crazy. Uh, all right, Hilarious. moving on. Number three. Star Trek. Hey, First which one? Contact, bro. Okay. My favorite scene ever, dog. John Luke Picard took his ass off and threw it out the airlock, nigga. <laughs> the line must be drawn. Yeah. <laughs> this far, no further. <laughs> kidding me, bro? <laughs> we finna go hunt the boy yeah, down, the, dog. the best um, <laughs> analogy for good acting. Dog, ass off, bro. <laughs> They, they simulate entire worlds and we fall back. No more. Bro. Mine must be drawn here, here dog. No Not further. Must be drawn here. This far, no further. Awesome. Ass off, dog. Took his whole ass off and, th- and, and beamed it out, dog. <laughs> okay, Star, Star Trek First Contact, my favorite Star Trek movie, one of my favorite movies ever. Number two. A newcomer, but it deserves it. Everything, everywhere, all ah, at once. Let's go. Man. The one. Love that oh movie. Oh my gosh. And number one, I've talked about this movie a few times, but I'm trying to tell you this needs to be on your list immediately, bro. Children of, of men. men. I need to watch it. I still haven't watched God, it. That movie is so it's on good. My list. It's, it's on my so list. good, bro. It's just one of the best like films. Just like a total piece of art. The story it's is fire. On my list. It's the way on my it's list. shot is fire. That one scene is just a fucking jaw dropper, bro. I'm a sucker. Oh, here's another thing. Oh, it's a one trick pony. Oh, the the one shot. <laughs> oh, fuck off, bro. This shit looks sweet. I don't care about your critique of that shit. They oh, look good. Guess. It looks good. Period. Cheers, no man. Number one. Boom, boom. Love it. That's a good list, man. I also have a ton of honorable mentions. My, you want to recap your list real quick for the, yes. for the folks at home? Number five, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Number four, Inception. Number three, Star Trek First Contact. Number two, Everywhere, Everything, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Number one, Children of Men. Boom. Nice. Uh, I, too, have some honorable mentions. My first honorable mention, man, the movie I just watched. Loved it so much. Arrival. I love Dene Villeneuve's 
I love him. He's another person. I love his this aesthetic, guy. his storytelling Bruh. style. I love his storytelling me, style. I love his cinematography. Yes. I love the way that he just does the Arrival. <laughs> I love Arrival, right? Arrival, yeah. if you haven't seen it, it's this movie about alien first contact. First that, of all, the most unique take yes. on Alien First Contact I've ever seen in my life. And I will say, for those of y'all who don't know and who know novelists very very well, this movie has absolutely zero combos. There's no zero. No air, no air combos. I don't think movie. there's a single fight scene in the whole movie. It's not. Not one. Not one. This is the best First Contact like story I've ever seen. Yes. It's amazing cinematography. The way that... It just, it just, his, it just, he just makes it seem so realistic, and it just makes sense. Um, if aliens came here, like, and, and they're these advanced beings, maybe they wouldn't have these crazy, elaborate spaceships. Maybe it would just be super, super, just sleek and just, and just efficient. You know what I mean? Yep. And just efficient, very yes. simple looking. Yep. And, and then it the design of the aliens like we always see the big martian head and all like the alien design was so unique and different in this movie something you've never seen before arrival's fire i love yes. it and it, it's just about uh if you guys have seen it's about these aliens come they hire this this lady who's a, lingu a linguist and she's trying to translate what they're saying to communicate them with them and humans are trash so humans are taking their translations out of play out of context in different countries and it's just it's so good. You guys just watch it. It's a great movie. Yep. Another honorable mention. Uh, it's early. I know we just saw it. Same thing. The creator was fired. It's good. What do you want from uh, me? <laughs> <laughs> that was an honorable mention for me as well. Uh, another honorable mention for me. Uh, Blade Runner 2049, man. I love Blade Runner 2049. Ryan Gosling, so good. Batista is in this movie. He is, he is so good. And he's only in it for like One five scene, minutes. One scene, bro. He's so... Bro. Let's Let's... Yeah. Out of the WWE actors, I was just about to say he might not be as big a star as The Rock or John Cena. Bro, he is the best actor by leaps and bounds out of all out of the three of them. And he he's is, and he's and John Cena is also like better than The Rock by a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and when it comes to acting, right. uh, but Batista's the best yes, out of the. Easily. He's by easily. Far like Batista has legitimate like dramatic acting chops. He does, and he's he was he's barely in Dune, um, mm -hmm. but he's so good in the scenes he's in a Dune. And then me reading the Dune book, the character that he plays, Beast Raban, mm -hmm. he is very so good at playing this character. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see him in uh, the sequel to Dune. Yep. Um, more on that later. All right, another honorable mention: Terminator Two, dog, Judgment Ooh. Day. I had no no Terminator in my list. Huh? This movie, one, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Two, super slept on soundtrack. Yeah. Three, slept on cinematography. Man, the the blue tint, like when it's nighttime in that movie, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, it yeah. kind of reminds me of the Matrix with the green, green how they yeah. do the green tint. Uh, but Terminator Two, Judgment Day, one of the greatest movies of all time. It's fire. I love it. I do, I trying not to have any anime. I didn't have I'm not having any anime on this list trying to keep it live action but obviously I give like you said obvious shout outs to Ghost in the Shell and Akira as obviously uh, another honorable mention for me Super 8 man I love Super yes. 8 so much that's a good movie uh, shout out to J.J. Abrams man um, Super 8's great I love it it's one of my favorite movies uh, one of my favorite group of kids getting into some stuff movies uh, but alright let's go Top five favorite sci-fi movies of all time. Coming in at number five. I know I just watched it, but I watched it twice already. Tenet, dog. Hey! Tenet coming in at number five on the sci-fi list. Loved this movie so much. This movie is so good. The backwards fight scene mm -hmm. in the in the airport one of the best things i've ever seen in my life then i am oh that's so cool you know they probably just nah i went and watched the behind the scenes making of this movie the way that they choreographed this fight scene was backwards yep that is one of the most ridiculous the coolest things i've ever seen in my life that seems amazing this movie is amazing the story uh hey man the whole movie is is a temporal pincer maneuver the entire yes. thing 
um, which if you've seen the movie, you know what that is. Uh, John David Washington, the protagonist, coolest name. His name is the protagonist. This tenet is so good. And, it's, and, and you know what it is? It's a James Bond film. It's a James Bond sci-fi movie. It's James Bond and, and Inception put together. It's crazy. Like, who the fuck wouldn't want to see that? Hey, come on now. It's This movie is <clears throat> it's so good. I love it. And Robert Pattinson, man. Yes. He's great, He's one bro. of my favorite actors. I he love is. Him. He is, bro. He's so good. He's excellent yeah, He got movie. a bad rap in America because we just knew him from Twilight. But man. Like, he be acting his ass dog, off. This movie is so awesome. And then, like, dog, that scene at the end, bro, I've never seen a movie where, like, it was kind of sad. It was like, by the way, we're best friends, dog. Yeah. I've been, we go way back. <laughs> you been my mans. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, you know, been my dog from jump. So then it's like, imagine doing this temporal pencil maneuver thing. And now you got to act like, you got to act like this dude that isn't your guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That movie is amazing. Yeah, I love Tenet, man. Shout out to Tenet. Even that, I mean, the the the, fight, the hallway fight scene, but also the battle at Bruh, the end. At the end. It, you had two armies. Dog, two. And, and oh, man. <laughs> just, yeah. this, this temporal pencil maneuver thing is more like the coolest thing ever. You have two armies. One army is going in in regular time. The other army is going in inverted. Giving each, they're giving each other the stuff that happened already. So yeah. they're going in with like the prior knowledge of what, what how it just went. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah. the and it's that's what's happening this whole movie. It's people trying to one up each other because they because they just did it so they know what happened already. Mm-hmm. It's it's this movie's insane. Shout out to Tenet. Love it. So I will say just really quick another uh, one of the one of the critiques that I hear about this movie and this is for folks that for and for like people who are film critics, it makes me lose respect for them because it gives, it's a window for them to like straw man where they create a thing that it, that they think is a is a flaw in order to hide more sinister uh biases whether it be racism mm, sexism, racism whatever. Mm. and so for example because because people who understand the way films are made or stories are told should know better than to than to make this critique they didn't explain the technology how it worked now if you are somebody who knows how stories are told and knows how films are and understands quote-unquote so-called good writing you would know that if the if the reason for the technology working is not central to the story then who the fuck cares it's not a like that didn't that wasn't that didn't matter like the 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 why for how the technology works was not relevant for the story to take place. Now, if this was a movie where like understanding the why was a plot point, then sure, you got to have some rules. But they gave you the rules. They, they gave you the they rules. They gave you the rules in the scene where the where the 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 doctor was like explaining yes. to him what was going on, right? Exactly. The, the inverse. She's talking about the invert the inverse and the inversion yeah. and you're not you're not shooting the bullet, you're catching you're it. You're catching it, right? That was those were the rules, bro. Like you don't that was it. So any Don't think about it. Anybody who goes any further than like, "Oh, well, how can you power?" blah 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 blah. blah. Like who cares, oh, dog? Like I don't hear y'all saying shit about how the fucking bro. warp engines work in Star Wars. You know why? Mm-hmm. Because who the fuck cares? It exactly. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It has no bearing on the story itself. So, like, I hear that critique all the time, and I'm like, bro, get out of here. You just, you're just racist, probably. Facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Seriously, like, that's what it is, though. It's, it's, it's uh, that is exactly what it is. Well, that's my number five tenant fire coming in at number four on my top five favorite sci-fi movies. Aliens, man. Let's go, Ellen Ripley. They mostly come at night, mostly. Ripley, Aliens, boy. man, love this movie so much. Uh, love the first one, but the second one steps it up with the action. Oh, yeah. uh, Ripley is so good in this movie. Uh, just this, the overall, just I. This movie is so good. Everything looks so good in this movie. The inside, like the way the ship looks, it's so just worn out. And then when they go to the ship, they got attacked. Like everything just looks great in this movie it's no cgi it's just effects camera effects um 
Only thing about aliens, I liked the way the alien looked more in the first movie. It just looks a little scarier because it doesn't have the, it, the design is less, so it just looks like horrifying because yeah. it has that like smooth, yeah, the smooth like, looks sort of a little scarier, s- sleek and like yeah. it like steaming for some yeah, reason. Yeah, <laughs> it just looks a little yeah. scarier. But uh, aliens, uh, man, I love this movie so much. Uh, shout out to Ellen Ripley. This movie is amazing, and I didn't drink milk for a long time. <laughs> the cyborgs, uh, but aliens number four, fire coming in at number three. Oh man, I have fallen in love with this franchise, Dune. Let's go, twenty twenty one. Oh my gosh, I love this movie, and then reading the book and seeing how great this movie is. This. This world should not be able to be made into a movie, man. It shouldn't. And 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 they did it yep. and it looks great and in these characters and this lore and these in this world and the story and the politics and all the stuff that's going on, these crazy different houses and, and the Trades and the Harkonnens and the yep. Benny Chesserit women and the all these different powers and the you know, the planets, Arrakis with the sand, the Fremen, the Sardaukars, like all this, all this stuff. And the crazy thing is like this first movie is such a small part. It's only half of the first book. Yep. But they did it and they did it in such a good job where they introduce enough stuff to where you understand the world now. That's that's mm-hmm. like the the most impressive part about this movie. Obviously, Jason Momoa, Duncan Idaho, he's great. Yep. Um, and they also did a great job just illustrating the Fremen and how sweet they are. I thought the cast in this movie was really good. I can't wait to see the second part, but just Dune, man, I really love this movie. I have ever since I started reading the book, I've watched this movie multiple times. I've seen it like probably ten times. I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. They did such a good job. I'm excited to see more. Dune Same. number three. And then my next two are boring. I'm sorry. Coming in number two, The Matrix. Uh, what you want me to do? I know Kung Fu. We talk about this movie all the time. Amazing. The green tint over the movie. One of my favorite parts. Just Keanu Reeves, man. Incredible. Amazing. Life-changing movie. Yep. And then number one, Everything Everywhere All at Once. My favorite. One of my just favorite movies of all time. This is literally my second favorite movie of all time. So good. Michelle Yo. Kehui Kwan, shout out to him doing the amazing fanny pack fight scene. Um, this movie is incredible. Uh, won a lot of awards as it should have. Just so great. Um, Jobu Tupaki, more, more powerful than your favorite. Uh, Doesn't villain. matter who. Doesn't matter who. More powerful than your favorite villain character. If it's not the um, one above all, like fucking, <laughs> fucking Bugs Bunny, then I don't know. I don't want to hear it. I mean, she kind of is bugged. So like, <laughs> right. Like, literally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tune like, <laughs> Right, bro. Like, um, you know. This is this is one of the best movies ever made. Just make If you haven't seen it, just watch it before the internet tries to tell you that it's overrated or something. Yeah, just watch this movie. They're already starting. They're already oh, trying. God. To tell you. See, just watch it. It's, it is an incredible. It's an amazing movie. Love it. That's my top five favorite sci-fi movies. Lots of honorable mention, but the top five is Tenet. Aliens, Dune at number three, The Matrix at number two, and everything, everywhere, all at once at number one. Sci-fi, man. It's one of my favorite genres now. Thank you for putting me on. Shout yes, out to sir. homie Nick. Also had a hand in putting me on some of these sci-fi movies. Uh, I watched another uh, movie recently called Upgrade. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, seen that. That was Upgrade is another fun cool. movie. This <laughs> the actor looks like Tom Hardy, <laughs> 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 so it's it was almost like watching Venom. But uh, this movie's cool. They do a lot of. Um, it's about a guy who gets an AI uh, put into his brain, and he and it like he can it will take over and do stuff for him and oh, it yeah, this, this guy fights for him and discount Tom Hardy and, he it, was, and it they do such a good job of like the camera work and his acting because like he'll be making these faces like what and then he'll just be like yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a good it's it's a fun movie so it should check out upgrade too another um, one that I uh, f- uh source code source code I am giving you that recommendation never seen it put in a source code is a really, really so clever movie the good sci-fi movies that I haven't seen that are next on my list are 
attack the block. Oh, bro, yes. You told me about that a long time ago. Fuck yeah, bro. Attack the block. That was my inter- that was everybody's introduction to, J- to most um, Americans introduction to John Boyega. To John Boyega, yeah. He is a beast in that film. Got to check it out. Attack the blocks. Allow Source it. code. Source code Children of Men. Mm-hmm. It's probably going to be the next an ex uh what is it? Ex Machina. Machina. Yes. That was going to be the next ones that I watched. Sci-fi, man. Watch Look. Them sci-fi movies, y'all. Movie that I would not recommend that's super overrated, Cloud Atlas. Not that good. <laughs> I thought it was going to be fantastic, but it's not that good. I have not seen Interstellar. <clears throat> How is that? Good. It's, a, it's it's not my favorite Nolan movie, but it's... Good. I, I don't like... I, that could have been an honorable mention. I don't like it as much as Inception, but I like it better than, like, Memento in terms of Nolan. I think that's a Nolan movie, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, it's good. It's really good. It's very. It's now that's a hard sci-fi movie. It's very like math and sciency, but it's good. Bet. A series that I recommend you check out, um, if you're ready to go that route. Would I be- am? Oh, there's um. There's um. What is? What's that show you were just telling me to watch? It's probably you said the same it's, one you said it's, you said it's a, a got some it's like dune very dune like it's yeah it's the show that inspired, that inspired it's the book it's a show about the book that inspired, inspired dune. dune yeah and it's called foundation foundation that's it's on apple called. tv very good foundation <clears throat> it's if you bro i'm telling you like when you watch it you're gonna be like oh okay i it's it, this is the same universe as dune basically okay. it's very very obviously influenced by dune uh, or rather, it's very, very obvious that this is where Dune got its inspiration. Ah, <clears throat> and it's nice. got some Game of Thrones to it in terms of like kingdoms and, and you know, fucking, uh, you know, this group and that group and mm. this kingdom and this empire and like the relationship that it has with this family and this planet and this group, this gotta, faction. Yeah, I got to check it out, man. Look, the lore oh, they, there's because the dune lore is yeah it's deep goodness it's deep 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 yep sci-fi man boom there it is let's go it's a good ass episode tenant was fire yep creator was fire go see them both yep black lead black same same <laughs> black guy as a matter of fact <laughs> same one not david washington good actor let's go Nepo baby but still a good actor let's go boom <laughs> hold on wait a minute i forgot something baby. <laughs> I forgot about an honorable mention. Uh oh. Dog. I need you to watch. This needs to go on your list. Okay. Bro, they clone Tyrone, dog. Oh, I haven't seen that. How is that? Excellent, bro. It's so good. Okay. It's fun. Like it's a little bit of it's kind of it's a comedy. Right. Funny and it's good. And it's like sweaty kinda. And and like it's sweaty and it's wow, also. Wow, this cast is insane. Bruh, John Boyega, ass off. He, obviously, that's our guy. You already know he, he's going to come with it. Uh, Jamie wow. Foxx, hilarious. Uh, Tiana Paris, amazing. Everybody is great in it. The story is like, it's got some undercover brother, but like, it's like undercover brother, but serious, but also still a comedy, mm. if that makes any sense. I had to watch this. And it's like a leg- it's like legit sci-fi. Also, it's good. It's really good, bro. I f- I completely forgot. Y'all need to watch that. Support support our guy John Boyega. They um, clone Tyrone. Adding it to the list. Yes, very good. All right, bye. <laughs>